Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Bonky Cook here, aka the Lonely Achievement God, and I am coming at you with part two of our Deadly Premonition 2 playthrough. We made it through the opening exposition, and we are jumping into old timey Francis York Morgan now. Uh, before he was Francis Zach Morgan, and uh, well, we'll see where we're going from here. I assume we're jumping back to Lacare. Louisiana in 2005. Zach. Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me, Zach? Uh huh? Echo. Echo. There you are, Zach. I was here the whole time. <laughs> Sleeping again? If only I could. Well, rise and shine. It's time for us to head back out into the chaos. Is that what we call Louisiana? The chaos. Let's do it. Isn't that right, Zach? Red. I'm a bull. Kind of a reverse bull. Dead to e premonition. Enidy. Oh, a blessing in disguise. Disguise what? Disguise coffee. Ah. Uh, uh, Two thousand and five. I had freshly graduated from high school in La Carre, Louisiana. Hey, there's a bird. He's got a gun! Look out! Oh, it's just a hook. Zach, it looks like she wants us to join her for breakfast. That doesn't look like coffee Perhaps to me. Perhaps this town's finally starting to warm up to us. Worm? It's hard to tell. Look at that, Zach. She's welcoming us with open arms. She's even willing to share that tasty morsel with us. What an honor. She wants some of the lobster. Hurry up and chow down, mister. Unless you like your breakfast stale. Well, the bird didn't get to eat anything. What an amazing place. I've been on top of the moon since the moment I got here. And the name of this wonderful town, Le Carre, sounds like French to me. But what does it mean? I'm the chef, David. If you want to know about the town, you'd better ask the concierge. Only amateur chefs flap their gums about stuff that ain't food related. lesson. David Jawara. Jawara, I assume? Chef? Did you hear that, Zach? He's a true professional. You say something, mister? Uh, no, not to you. I was just talking to Zach. Zach? Uh, please don't ask me about Zach. It's a private matter. If you say so, still. Never thought the FBI would ever come out to a little old town like ours. I do work for the FBI, but I didn't come here for an investigation. I just happened to stop by on my way to New Orleans. <sighs> Never thought there'd be a murder out here either. And it was a 16-year-old kid. Now I tell you, this country seen better days. What Three you generation mean? says that. Zach, he's definitely a professional but it seems like he's also a bit lonesome. That's good. Ambivalence exists everywhere. Folks say the killer used an axe. Hell of an old-fashioned choice if you ask me. Actually, Chef David, if you don't mind, I'd like to ask you a few questions about the incident. Did you Was kill her? You? I ain't the one you ought to be asking, Mr. FBI. 
I only heard what I heard. But seeing as you're fixing to grill me, I can tell you what I know. Please do. I appreciate it. What do you know about the victim? You said the victim was a 16-year-old. Did you know her? Well, we sure. Skip things I reckon the whole town did. Oh, she was that type of girl. Meaning? She's Lise Clarkson, the little grandbaby of the Clarkson family. The Clarkson family? That's right. You ain't seen they sign on your way in here? The one above that huge coal storage complex. Should have had a dragonfly on it. Anyway, that's the Clarkson family seal. They own most of the land around here, from the sugar plantations right down to the food processing plant. Yeah, I reckon they got a stake in just about everything. They even own the water tower on the edge of town, you know. They're the ones who built up this town, and they still support it. Where's the Clarkson's house? What do you know about the Clarkson's house? Now, I ain't got nothing bad to say, but I'm gonna talk straight to you. You best steer clear of that place. That family ain't just some gang. They're a whole different kind of beast. They folks with real power. Remnants of the good old boys who shaped America in the early days. So they're racist. Especially the head of the family, P.J. Clarkson. He's the kind of monster who goes around eating other monsters. And I'm sure he's on edge now with his granddaughter getting murdered and all. Unless he did it. So don't go barging in with that shiny FBI badge of yours and think you'll be safe for nothing. Things are different down here. So if you plan on sticking around, you best remember that. I see. I'll keep that in mind. Is the What's local the law enforcement, enforcement investigating the case? We asked what the local law enforcement is doing. <laughs> Shoot, mister, what you think? Now, I told you this ain't no city. We in the bonafide boondogs here. They got the know-how to break up fights and keep folks from killing each other when they piss jaw. They sit down and talk it out with you heart to heart. And when that don't work, they just beat your ass. That's the deep south for you. This murder ain't like that, though. A little kid got killed. A weird way. Like something on a TV show. The sheriff's department ain't never seen nothing like this. What do you know about Noland? Live and let die, Angel Heart, and the Pelican Brief. Right? Nine out of ten people will name those titles when you ask them to think of a film set in New Orleans. They're all excellent movies, but to me they lack realism. Due to my line of work, I have a tendency to think deeply about what feels real and what doesn't. What's your point? Cat people. That's my point. Cat people. Mm -hmm. 1982. Directed by Paul Schrader. I follow. The crowning achievement of Nastasia Kinski, the ultimate muse of the 80s. The most vital element of that movie is the reality it depicts. Leopards who turn into humans have intercourse with humans and turn back into leopards. That's normal. Then they can only turn back into humans again if they mutilate their lovers. I was awestruck by the sheer reality of it all. Understand? I'm talking about hyper-realism. After watching it, I felt like I just had to experience the world of cat people for myself. That's why I decided to visit New Orleans. Uh, okay. Another vital element of cat people is the presence of Malcolm McDowell. Malcolm McDowell from Blue Thunder. Oh, talk about a masterpiece. Listen carefully, David. Only an amateur would call A Clockwork Orange his best movie. His best movies are Cat People and Blue Thunder, period. You need to remember this because it's the truth. Mm, whatever you say, mister. So, uh, what's your point again? Never mind, don't worry about it. I already covered all the important parts. It was a bizarre murder? When you say it was like something from a TV show, what exactly do you mean? Hey, mister. Why do you look so excited, huh? Like a kid asking grandma to read him a fairy tale. I just can't seem to keep myself away from young women who died in bizarre ways. Oh. Well, I ain't seen it with my own eyes. But folks say they found the body hanging under a bridge on the bayou. And under that bridge, there was some kind of altar. An altar? Like something they use in black magic. Something horrible. Voodoo? Nah, 
Wasn't nothing like that. Just a weird altar. That's all? Oh, and the body was all cut up in pieces. Scattered around the altar like. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That I forgot about this. The body was diced up into pieces. Yeah, I mean, kind of normal. So she was sacrificed. That's what the fella who discovered her said, yeah. Bingo, Zack. This case has got our names all over it. How can I get around town? Well, by the way, Mr. FBI, I ain't seen a car in the parking lot. How'd you get all the way out here, huh? Don't tell me you walked. Well, that's a very good question. Chef David, you've got a sharp eye. It's true that I didn't park my car in your parking lot. Do you know why? Can't say I do. Because it was stolen. Huh? But you went to FBI, right? Even FBI cars can be stolen. It could happen after you park your car on the side of the road and go off to do some legwork. When you're eating lunch, when you're watching a movie, when you're asleep at night, when you're buying cigarettes at the local supermarket. Your car can be stolen anywhere. That's precisely what it means to be an FBI agent. In my case, my car was stolen while I was on my way down here. But no need to worry. I already reported it to the local authorities. And I've also already acquired another mode of transportation. Another mode? Want to hear the details? Not really. But I'll listen if you want me to. <laughs> then please do. After I finished my work in Houston, I flew to New Orleans. Then, I rented a car at the airport. Whenever I visit the West Coast, I always rent a convertible, especially in California. But now I'm in hot and sticky Louisiana. So I decided on a brand new hybrid car with a fully equipped air conditioning system. A hybrid car? Oh yes, they're marvelous. Vehicles that utterly defy everything you think you know about cars. Now, in the year 2005, it feels like we finally entered the 21st century. Stomp down on the gas all you want. The engine won't make a sound. It's silent? At first, I felt like the landscape was moving past me on its own. Give it a few more years, and I'm sure we'll start seeing cars that run purely on electricity. Who knows? In a decade or so, electric sports cars may end up lining the parking lots of Silicon Valley. I can see it now. It's the world of The Last Starfighter. 1984, directed by Nick Castle. It's famous for being the first film to utilize realistic CG, but I couldn't care less about that. See, I was mesmerized by the beautifully refined mech designs. It even made me wish that I could be one of them myself, especially the Gunstar spacecraft. No other sci-fi movie has ever had. So, uh, yeah, where'd your hybrid car get stolen? Sorry, I got off topic. I noticed it was missing after I finished my lunch and walked out of the diner. Incidentally, this diner was located at the entrance to a small town just south off the I-10. I went out to get back in it, but my hybrid car was nowhere to be found. I remembered exactly where I parked it, right between a blue pickup truck and a hedgerow. But when I came back from lunch, it had completely vanished. In short, someone stole it. And in its place, they left me this. What? A skateboard. A skateboard? Yes. While I was sliding my lunch into my stomach, someone was busy replacing my brand new hybrid car with a wooden board attached to four wheels. Remarkable, don't you think? So then how did you get here? By riding the skateboard, obviously. Why do you look so surprised? No, I couldn't ride the board very well at first. But... By the time I hit the three-mile mark, I'd more or less gotten the hang of it. By the ten-mile mark, I'd even learned to do a few tricks. It was a journey of self-discovery. Not even I knew I had this latent talent sleeping inside me. This summer's gonna be another hot one. It's supposed to get over 95 today. Oh, well then just kill me. I will melt away. I'll melt away at like 75. Watch out, you don't go getting heat stroke. The least Clarkson case needs us. Don't you think so, Zach? The cat people are what guided us to New Orleans. We should be thanking Malcolm McDowell. Once we get home, let's watch Blue Thunder again. I'm already looking forward to it.
Aren't you, Zack? Zack, the searing light. Hmm, these scents. It's the deep south. Hmm, that was a fabulous breakfast. You're the world's greatest chef. Uh, wait, mister. You didn't take a single bite. Well, the tea was to die for. But I'd prefer coffee next time. Ah. What would a morning be without coffee? I knew it. Okay. Let's see what we got. We're walking! Oh my gosh! Lots of people just enjoying their meals. I don't see anything I can interact with. <laughs> Frame rate isn't the greatest. If you put this in uh, on the Xbox, the FPS boost might make it like 30 frames. This is mean. This must be our room. It says so on the door. Okay, ooh, our suit. There we go. Now we're looking sharp. Son Rouge. We've been chasing it all over America, but I feel like we're finally on the verge of finding something now. Don't you, Zack? I think it's about time we ordered a new briefcase. Yes, I know this one carries a lot of memories, but it's seen too much. This hole's from the shootout in Tucson. And this stain's from Miami. Ah, uh, Miami. Now, that was a fascinating case. Billy, our perp, cut his own torso right in two, even with the help of the drugs. A feat like that still requires incredible mental fortitude. I was so impressed that I forgot I'd left my briefcase on the floor. Same floor his blood gushed out onto. <laughs> I know, Zach, I know. Now isn't the time for a trip down memory lane. Sure it is. Ooh, we gotta organize our evidence. Okay. We've collected a lot so far. Saint Rouge. An emergent drug that's been on the rise in four southern states. Personally, I think it originated right here in Louisiana. And these Clarkson's murder must be connected to it somehow. The 16-year-old girl who was murdered. Her body was found beneath a bridge over the bayou, along with a strange altar. The powerful man who essentially Clarkson. controls the town of Lucare. But I get the feeling he's going to talk like Foghorn Leghorn. And he seems to be more fearsome than your average gangster. I doubt he'll be willing to cooperate with any law enforcement, Zack. We did it! We're the best at investigating. You know, I keep thinking about that movie we stopped to see on our way here, Zach. The Island, 2005, directed by Michael Bay. For a movie being shown at a cinema complex, it was surprisingly artistic. An experimental setting mixed with hard-hitting drama. It was art house sci-fi. That director's going to change the history of art house films. 
Are you following me here? This is another special film that's setting a new standard, just like Star Wars and Blade Runner did. This is a turning point, Zach. You may be witnessing the birth of a vital new word that will soon become a part of film history. Yes, this single movie may be responsible for creating a whole new genre several years down the line, a genre known as island movies. I sure like the sound of that. Don't you, Zach? Knock on the door. Answer the door. Man, these quests are getting complicated. Before we do, let's check out. We got a phone there. Oh, that's how we save. It's our toolbox. Oh, I got you. Okay. I'm gonna take food. Taking bag. That. I'm very satisfied with the decorations and the size of this closet, Zach. And it's even got a security box. What else could a man ask for? It's proof that we're still safely inside the fringes of modern civilization. You can use the closet to change clothes and send clothes out for dry cleaning, just like the first game. If you wear the same clothes for a long time, they'll become dirty, so make sure you clean them regularly and properly groom yourself. Do note that when you send one outfit out for dry cleaning, you won't be able to wear it again until it's delivered back to you. Stylish Brown and Agent. We'll just stick with Agent then. Bathroom. Toilet with a lot of space. Tub. Wow, I love Due the shower. Due to the nature of our work. But Zach, do you know what? Shower pressure. The shower was invented so that human beings could quickly bathe in large quantities of water, correct? Yet there are far too many hotels in our nation that have showers with embarrassingly weak water pressure. It's an outrage. And I'll keep tooting my horn about this every chance I get, believe you me. We showered. Time to shave. This would terrify me. I don't know if I could sleep with that in my hotel room. Something else here. Not gonna let us sleep. Hey, okay, let's go answer the door. Hey, it's the chef. Hey there, chef. What's cooking? Chef, what are you talking about, sir? I'm the concierge, David. <laughs> I just heard from our chef that you wish to learn the meaning behind our town's name. Yep. Yes, I've gathered that Lucare is French, but does it have any special meaning? Why, yes, sir, of course it does. A very clear, logical meaning. All names have meanings. Would you like to know what this one means? Yes, I would. Jolly good, sir. Then allow me to explain. Lucare means square in French. Ah. And? That's it. <laughs> that's it? <laughs> yes, that's it, sir. Do take a gander at the town map in the lobby if it fancies you. It's beautiful, valuable, and old. Oh my. I'm sure you'll understand once you see it. Now, please excuse me, sir. If you ever need anything, please don't hesitate to ask. Did you see that, Zach? That was clearly David. Not a twin, not a split personality, just the work of a true professional. It's bizarre, but I can understand it. Remember what they say, the job makes the man. <laughs> also saves on voice actors. Okay. 
check out the map. Always helps to have a map. Here's the map. Do you feel that, Zach? Dozens feel of it, paintings no one will ever see. The faint you scent of it, tobacco baked into these walls for over a century. Now that's what I call a hotel. Zach, can you see him? His fashion sense is beyond me, but he appears to be a gentleman. Perhaps we should talk to him. Nice tie. Did you buy it here? It's been a long time since someone spoke to me. No one these days ever tries to see me. They can see what's far in the distance, but are blind to what's in front of them. No. Maybe they're only pretending not to see. That's what civilized society does to people. Exactly. Ever since mankind got their hands on civilization, they zoomed away at a frightening speed. Zoomed away from what? <laughs> <laughs> Don't be a fool. You know the answer. As for me, just call me Hoongan. Hoongan? title given to a leader in a certain religion. Is that what you are? Buffalo be jamming. Do you comprehend the oracle? The oracle? Put on your religion hat, Zach. Here we go. Fell tin maidens in the shrine of hunger. Find the flying serpent in the ambiguous zero. Dance with the flying serpent, and you will glimpse the other world. Ten maidens and an ambiguous zero. Got it. But what do you mean by other world? Follow the oracle. So Zach, did you hear all that? Looks like we've already taken our first step into chaos. But such is our duty. We need to accept the chaos, let it inside, then carefully dismantle it piece by piece. And after we've put all the pieces back into their rightful places, the truth will reveal itself. Let's capture the truth and present it with a shiny pair of silver bracelets, Zack. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to be the end of part two of our Deadly Premonition 2 playthrough here. We are going to continue on uh, investigating the town. We can see the map over there in the distance, so we'll probably wander around the lobby and check out the map our next run here but that's going to do it for us today if you have any questions or comments for me let me know down below if you do not like share subscribe all that fun stuff and check out my website if you don't have anything else ladies and gentlemen i will see you guys in part three of our deadly premonition 2 playthrough